Mention strobe lights, and perhaps the 70s disco comes to mind. But you find strobe lamps, the proper term, by the way, on aircraft wings, in those red and blue lights on police cars, and on towers and tall buildings to warn low-flying aircraft. They even play a role in photography and on factory production lines. A strobe lamp emits repeated flashes of high-intensity light. At this factory, production begins with glass blowers. Using a ribbon burner, they heat glass tubes to 1600 degrees Celsius. This softens the glass for bending into a specific shape. At the same time, they blow air through a rubber hose attached to one end of the tube. A cork in the other end traps the air inside. This builds counter pressure to prevent the tube walls from collapsing inward as the glass softens. The size and shape of the glass tube varies by model, but its job is always the same, to house electrodes, lead wires and xenon gas. The electrodes conduct the current, which charges the gas with electricity, making it illuminate. This factory makes several strobe lamp models, some in large quantities for the mass market, others in small quantities, custom designed for specific clients. With mass-produced models, after glass blowing, automated machines take over. Custom orders are handmade from start to finish. Workers make even the electrodes manually. They weigh a precise amount of metal powder and pour it into the cavity of a press that's similar to what pharmaceutical factories use to make pills. This powder is a blend of several different materials, but the company won't divulge what they are. The press applies four tons of pressure, compressing the powder into a pellet. The factory inspects every pellet to ensure it meets quality standards. The pellets then undergo a process called sintering. They bake for nine minutes in a hydrogen-fueled oven, hydrogen being one of the hottest types of fuel. The 1700 degrees Celsius heat fuses the powder particles into a solid unit that won't crumble apart. Next, they weld a lead wire to each electrode. Insert two electrodes, one for the positive current, one for the negative, into each glass tube, then melt that end of the tube closed. Then they attach a wire called a trigger lead. It works like a car's ignition, prompting a transformer to send a high voltage electric pulse to the electrodes, illuminating the gas. This automated machine assembles the factory's mass-produced models. Before starting it up, workers load the components. A pair of electrodes made by an automated pill press and the glass tube on top. Now the machine takes over. It vacuums out the air in the tube, then injects xenon gas, then melts the glass tube closed under the electrodes, then cuts off the excess glass. The tube's interior must be completely free of contaminants for the gas to illuminate. So just before the vacuum fill and seal operation, a hot coil encircles each tube to burn away any impurities. On custom-made models, workers do all these steps manually. The strobe lamp is finished and ready for installation. This model is for those warning lights you see on tow trucks and road construction vehicles. It goes into a glass reflector lined with metallic film. A transformer regulates the voltage. Its three wires connect to the positive, negative and trigger leads protruding from the lamp. A glass lens cover seals and protects the lamp within the reflector. Another use for a strobe lamp is in a stroboscope, an industrial device that factories use to perform quality control inspections on high-speed production lines. Once you calibrate the light pulses to the right interval, they visually stop the action so that cameras or workers can examine the goods. The size, shape and configuration of a strobe lamp's components, along with voltage and other electrical specs, determine how long, how often and how quickly the light flashes. Thank <laughs> you.